Hey guys, it's your favorite Dynabot here, and today we're going to scale the mighty, the ultimate, the bodacious Ultraman. Now we're going to go through this like I always do, baseline scaling, then the high tier stuff. So let's start off. The baseline stuff is pretty easy. Um, he starts actually at athlete level, or at least around superhuman level. This is because he can actually destroy monsters like pretty easily in his human form with little to no effort. And these monsters are just capable of smashing walls. And I guess you could say like around maybe small building level, around like house, you know, like small building level and such stuff. But when he goes into his giant form, he is city level. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. He is city level because this is actually a pretty good kaiju standard for anything above the likes of 100 feet or anything, you know, at 100 feet should be around city level attack bonusy. He's even been able to vaporize monsters that have been known to be casual city busters itself here. Um, some of them are like jobber monsters. Some of them are really just to, you know, write home about here. I mean, he's very, you know, he it's very effective. You know, he's able to vaporize these monsters like it's nothing with his specimen ray and his ultra sass, which we'll get into in like, you know, a couple minutes here. But, uh, yeah, I think for baseline level, city level is pretty simple. I mean, he's casually going to just destroy the city. These monsters are casually just city busted itself. Now, let's get into the good stuff here. This is Beam Star or Bream. It's either Beam or Bream. I don't really, I don't know. I kept getting confused as I was actually looking the guy up anyway. But um, let's call him Beam Star, right? Beam Star is so powerful that he's able to survive supernovas. Yeah, that's a casual thing here. He's able to survive supernovas and Ultraman has been able to create constellations. Now, with the calcs and feats for this one, this easily puts around star, if not solar level, like it's absolutely nothing. This may even require, you know, more AP in that department as well, considering he's able to not only move these stars, but also create freaking constellations. Like, really, how do y'all see that? Don't that look like a constellation turtle? And Ultraman is casually able to create this as well. So, these are just this is insane because these are constellations. The sheer AP you need to create constellations is absolutely amazing. And this is Zayton. Zayton is basically solar system level. So, <laughs> you can actually say solar system plus here. As Zayton was confirmed that he was going to wipe out the entire solar system like it was nothing. There's also um, Hudra. It's either Hudra or Hydra. I don't really... Uh, there was different pronouncing nations, but let's call him Hudra, right? Hudra was able to create his own universe. This will put Ultraman yet again at universal, okay? This is another, you know, universal scaling feat or universal plus as he was able to defeat Hudra and was just simply above him. So him being able to not only go toe to toe, but actually defeat Hudra himself, this will put Ultraman around the universal plus to possibly the multiversal caliber. And this is actually pretty impressive here. Being Sorry, this is actually pretty impressive. Just due to the fact that he's able to defeat a being that could really just create universes and was able to survive a universal bomb. Yeah, I know it, it, it sounds weird and it may sound a bit, you know, you know, out of pocket for, I guess, a you know, an Ultraman thing. But yeah, he was able to survive a bomb that was going to destroy the universe. OK, but none of this compares to the you kill a sword scale. This is an absolute monster, an absolute beast, okay? You kill a sword scales above all that. And I mean all of it, okay? You kill a sword is, is able to take on multiple Ultraman at the same time. These Ultraman scale to each other, you know, they're able to fight on par with one another. And you kill a sword is. is just massively above it so you have a character that is massively above universal plus characters this hits the multiversal level bracket okay you might be like whoa 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 legendary what are you talking about but you have to pay attention to how tiering and tiering brackets work 
Yes, there are characters that hate Universal Scales, and there's Universal Plus, but if Ultraman is already Universal Plus, you got, there's that other bracket. Now, you might say, whoa, you just skipped Galaxy level out the solar system. Yeah, I did, because that's just how it is. The u Solar Scaling puts him around Multiversal and Attack Potency. As he's above these multiple Ultraman, above Hoodra. He's literally the strongest threat they ever had to face. So, yeah, um, Ultraman, uh, has, he has his word cut out for him, okay? The sheer fact that Eukilosaurus is above Hoodra, Universal. Uh, you got Breamstar, who's around star level. Or maybe you could argue Solar System, because Solar Systems, you know, sorry, Supernovas can destroy Solar Systems. And then you have the Universal Bomb. Okay, which he is above. And then you have, what's his name? You have Zayton. Okay, you have Zayton as well, who is a solar system level character. Okay, you might say, oh, well, doesn't that make him galaxy low? But remember the scaling. Remember what's happening. An Ultraman can survive the universe being blown up around him. Or a weapon that's capable of destroying the entire universe. Or being able to fight beings who can create their own universes. So again, it, it, it's, you know, it's literally just that on itself. Now in terms of hacks and abilities, he possesses his, you know, energy shield, which can block out anything. Including poison and diseases. So he has a little bit of, sorry, a little bit of uh, immunity to that. Albeit his tier, he should be immune to that. He also possesses the um, Specimen Beam and the Ultra Slash. The Ultra Slash is actually confirmed to be stronger than the Specimen Beam, which is actually able to slice monsters in half. That's actually pretty impressive, considering he uses the Specimen Beam for everything. Sorry. <clears throat> he uses the Specimen Beam for basically everything. So he really, he, you know, that Ultra Slash is basically kind of like, you know, how Goku uses that Spirit Bomb. Like, you know, he's got that Kamehameha, but he has to wind up using that Spirit Bomb. And this is actually pretty impressive due to the sheer fact he's able to be a monster that I think not even um, Barugan could beat. And Barugan is a light entity. So, yeah, he's able to unleash these in flurries as well. So imagine being hit with something so many times that, um, you know, it's just, you know, it just doesn't compare. Okay. Then you have the Specimen Beam. Which is at its lowest, at its lowest, right, is capable of still destroying the planet. That's the lowest you get for the specimen beam. The lowest, not city level, but the lowest you get for that beam is, you know, city level. Sorry, um, planetary. <laughs> so you might say, okay, well, why did you calc him at his baseline level? Well, here's the thing, right? Some attacks have a higher output then the user itself it's very common it's very common that a user for example um blade right blade has a ghost rider killing gun that's above his standard ap okay blade is normally a large building level character in the same bracket as characters like spider-man but yet with his weapons or with his abilities he's able to pretty much kill beings that you know, would normally be out of side of his bracket, or in the same bracket as characters like Thor. And Ultraman would have that same thing, even at his lowest baseline level. But with all the scaling here, I do think it cements Ultraman as a multiversal entity. So please comment down below, like and subscribe and share with your friends, and let me know if you guys want a matchup with Ultraman. Peace.